there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for another one of my videos. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about what I've been sewing and knitting in March. And I've got three garments to share with you that I sewed in March. And I've also got a couple of knitted items too, which I'll include at the end of the video. I did make a couple more garments than I'm including in this video in March. But I've already talked about them in quite a lot of detail in a video I released last week because I made them as part of the Sew Frugal Challenge and they were three outfits I made using um, three sewing patterns and then I used remnants from my stash to make them. So you may have seen that video already if you watched my last week's video but I'll include a link to it in case you fancy checking that out. But because I talked in quite a lot of detail in that video about those three outfits I thought I wouldn't include them in this video and I just talk about the other things I've been making in March. But yeah, um, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. First of all, I'll start with what I'm wearing today. And I'm wearing two handmade items today. The top you'll probably recognise is one of my favourites. It is the Freya top from the Tilling the Buttons stretch book, which is this book here. Um, it's my favourite pattern from this book. I've got quite a few of these tops um, in um, quite a couple, few in stripes actually. Some patterned and some plain, and I find them all really useful items in my wardrobe and they're nice and cosy for a day like today. Because although we're in April now, the weather's really cold here. There was frost on the grass this morning. It's now raining. Definitely haven't had any lovely spring weather in April so far. But yeah, this is um, a fray I made in cotton jersey. It's a nice stripy cotton jersey. I think the colours are quite interesting, a bit different on this one. I got it quite a long time ago from an online fabric shop that has since closed down, unfortunately. Um, I don't know whether I've seen it pop up somewhere else. I think Somi Sunshine might have had a bit of this fabric at one point. I'll see if they've got it still. I'll link it down below if I can find it. But yeah, it's quite nice and comfy to wear. I always make the size two of the Freya top, which fits my bust measurement and I think my waist measurement. And I think my hips are slightly larger, but there's plenty of stretch in the fabric, so I've never needed to grade out. And I always lengthen the sleeves a bit to make sure they're nice and cosy. So that's the top I'm wearing and I'm teamed it with a pinafore dress that I made using this pattern here. It is the Fiona sundress pattern by Closet Core Patterns. It's a really nice and a bit different pinafore pattern. I've got a couple of pinafores, they're a bit more loose fitting, but this is much more of a fitted shape to it. I'll show you the line drawings. It's a pinafore with princess seams on it. And they call it a sundress, but it's designed to be made for layering too. So you could, it would make quite a pretty sundress, but yeah, I think it works well as a pinafore layered up for winter. It's designed to be made in woven fabrics. Um, yeah, it's got these princess seams. It's got these straps that you can either make at the back in kind of a straight um, back line or this cool crossover detail that comes down to the waist. And it's got quite a straight fitting skirt and then it's got buttons all the way down the front and patch pockets. So I really enjoyed sewing this one because it was a bit different to other pinafores I've sewn. Oh, I should mention in terms of sizing, a lot of closet core patterns have two size ranges, a size zero to 20 and a size 14 to 32, but this one's only available in the size 0 to 20, at least at the moment. But it's a really nice, interesting pattern. I do think the pin princess themes give nice shaping to it. And I made my version in a stretch denim, which makes it really comfy, even though it's quite fitted. It's a stretch denim I got from Fabric Godmother quite a while ago, so I doubt it's probably still in stock, but if I can find something similar on the Fabric Godmother website, I'll link it down below. And then I added on these jeans buttons, which are quite nice. And also meant I didn't have to sew on lots of buttons all the way down, but I think they work quite well with the denim. I did make a full toile of this pinafore dress before I made it, because I wasn't sure about how it would fit on the different areas of my body. And I actually graded between three sizes on this pattern too. I went, I, when I did my toile, I quite like to often start based on my measurements and then kind of work from there. So I made a size two on the bust and then a size four on the waist and then a size six on the hips, which corresponds to my measurements, which are 20, no, 32, 26, 36. And I had to make a few tweaks after that. So I'm really glad I made a toile of it to get a nice fit, but I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks on. Like I said, I think it's just a bit different to the kind of Clio pinafore by Tilling the Buttons, which is very straight. It's just another slightly different option. And it is really comfy to wear because it's quite stretchy, this denim. So that is what I'm wearing today. So now I'll move on to sharing what I've been making in March. And the first garment I made in March is one I've been wanting to make for a while, so I was pleased to finally get round to it. And it's a blouse I made using a really pretty blouse pattern, which is this pattern here. It's the Bloomsbury blouse pattern by Nina Lee London. And I've got the paper pattern of this one. I do love the Nina Lee paper patterns because they've always got these really pretty illustrations, I think Nina does herself. 
and the illustrations always link in with the area of London that the um, pattern's named after. So this one's Bloomsbury, which is kind of literary area in London. So it's got lots of little books and little ink pots and um, little sort of quill type pens. But I think it's quite pretty. But it's a really pretty woven blouse pattern. I think it's Edwardian inspired. It's got this high neckline with an optional ruffle on the neck and you can also add a little optional ruffle on the bracelet length sleeves. Then it's got bust starts and this really cool ruffle that goes around the front with a yoke here. And I'll show you on the back. The back has a button down back and the ruffle goes all the way around the back too. So it's a really pretty one, a bit different. And you can make the ruffle either in quite a large statement ruffle or a more subtle ruffle. So there are a few different choices for this one. Um, in terms of sizing, it goes from a UK 6 to a UK 20, so it's not, not part of Nina Lee's extended size range, which she's done on quite a few patterns, which is a shame. So the largest size is for a bust of 46 inches. And it's designed for lightweight woven fabrics, um, and the pattern recommends cotton lawn. It says you can also make it in velvet or silk, um, or contrasting lace for the oak sections, which is pretty cool, I've just read that. Yeah, it's a really pretty pattern and as, as I said one I've seen a lot of lovely versions of and I think it adds a really pretty twist this ruffle on a classic blouse and it's a bit different to have the button down back too I guess instead of a button down front so I was really looking forward to giving it a go. So the fabric I chose to make my blouse in is a really pretty viscose crepe fabric by Atelier Brunette. I'll show you the fabric here. I think it's called Dune um, as in D-U-N-E. I think it's designed to kind of um give the feel of sand off the Mediterranean coast of um, sort of um, blowing around the dunes. I think that's why it's called dune, but it's a really pretty fabric. It comes in a few different colours. I bought mine from Minerva and they had the black colourway and then I think there was an off-white and a sort of smoky dark green colour and also a chestnut colour. But I quite like the black base and I think black is a colour that um, I can wear well. So that's why I decided to go for it. It's got this really pretty sort of um, chestnutty colour on it too. So yeah, it's a really lovely fabric actually. I think I've mentioned before in my videos, crepe is not always my favourite fabric. I'm not never quite sure about the texture of it, but this is such a fine crepe. You don't really notice the texture and it has such a lovely drape to it. It did make it a bit more challenging to sew the blouse um, than if I'd made, say, a cotton lawn. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad I went for it actually because it's got such a nice drape. I think it makes the ruffle look um, quite drapey and not too much of a feature, which is what I wanted. So this is my Bloomsbury blouse, you can see how it turned out and I'm really happy with how it came together. Um, as you can see I went for the larger ruffle and I think it works really well in this drapey fabric and has a really pretty effect as it drapes over the shoulders and things. And I'll show you the back too and um, with the ruffle again. And I got the um, Atelier Brunette buttons that kind of match this fabric. I got the 12 millimetre size buttons and I got those from Guthrie Garney, they have a really nice selection of those buttons in stock. And I'm glad I went for their buttons because I think they work really well with the fabric. The buttons are quite matte and the fabric's quite matte too. It doesn't have a sort of sheen to it like some viscose fabrics do. So I think they tie in really well. See, I really love the blouse. I'm really happy with how it's come together. And I think the neckline's quite pretty and the way it sort of fits around your neck is really nice as well. It's got a nice shape to it. In terms of sizing, um, I went based on my measurements. So I made a six at the bust, which is for a bust 32. And then I graded up to an eight at the waist and hips. And that's designed for waist 26 and hips 35.5 centimetres, which is pretty much me. I've always found Nina Lee patterns come up on the fitted size, so I thought it'd be safe to go with my measurements on it. I did make a couple of adjustments in terms of sizing. Um, I lowered the armhole just slightly to give it a little bit more space around the armhole, because when I made the Nina Lee Bakerloo blouse, I found it came up a little bit tight around the arm, um, and I didn't want to make a full pile of this one, so I thought... I just on the safe side add a bit more extra room there and if I don't need it you won't be able to see it much anyway so I'm glad I did actually because that's quite a nice comfortable fit now just by scooping out a little bit more space around the armhole there and I also lengthened the blouse by 1.5 inches because I wanted to be able to tuck it into jeans and things so I wanted to make sure there's plenty of fabric there so I was tuck in so it wouldn't sort of pull out a bit and I'm quite pleased with the length as it is and then in terms of the finishing, because this fabric was really delicate and I wanted to make sure the blouse was built to last, I did French seams on all the seams where I could. I'll take the blouse off the hanger and show you a little bit of the French seams. Oh, come on, hanger. I just took a moment there to turn the blouse entirely inside out so you can see the seam finishes a little bit better. So here, here it is inside out. So you can see um, I've done French seams all around the armholes and I've got the French seams down the side seams and on the sleeves too. And again, with the 
cuffs, I've sort of turned them over twice rather than overlocking them so all the raw edges are entirely enclosed. And then for the um, ruffle around the yoke, I decided for that to use the fabric scraps I had left over from this fabric and I made some bias binding and then I enclosed that ruffle seam entirely using bias binding because it's a bit more bulky so I thought bias binding would work really well on that. So I'm really pleased with the finish of the seams on the inside on this one. I'm hoping that means this delicate fabric will sort of stand up to the test of time and last well. And then there's one other thing I wanted to show you on this blouse. There's one other adjustment I made. So I'll just take a moment to turn the blouse the right way around again. <laughs> so the one other adjustment I made when sewing this pattern was to the buttons at the back of the blouse. And when I was having a look in more detail at the pattern, when I started tracing it and cutting out the fabric pieces, I noticed that the buttons only go from the ruffle down. There's no button designed to go on the back yoke piece here. And I was a bit worried about that gaping open a little bit, particularly with more drapey fabric like I had. So I decided to add an extra button there just to hold it together because I thought as well, I'm not sure I'd enjoy having it gaping there. It might be a bit chilly. <laughs> so I had to adjust how I sewed those pattern pieces on the back yoke to add that button. I'll show you the buttons on there now. Here it is holding it together um, nicely there. But yeah, the pattern pieces aren't drafted for that piece to have interfacing or a button band on, but I knew I needed to add some interfacing just to kind of make it sturdy enough to take that buttonhole and button. But I'd already cut out the fabric pieces by then and um, before I realised I needed that, so I couldn't add any extra length onto them. So what I did was these pattern pieces here are designed to be turned under by one centimetre and then one centimetre again, then edge stitched to create like a little edge for this piece down here. I decided instead to turn under by 0.5 centimetres and then add a strip of 1.5 centimetre wide interfacing, then turn under by that 1.5 centimetres and then edge stitch. So I ended up with a slightly wider edge stitch piece that was interfaced and then I could put a buttonhole and a button on there. And that worked out fine, although next time I think I might just extend the pattern pieces so I can add a proper button band the same size as down below. But I don't think it matters the button band slightly different down there because it's a whole different section anyway. But yeah, I added that on. I'm glad I made that little adjustment. So I needed one extra button and the pattern specifies. I think the pattern says six buttons and I ended up getting seven to add the extra one there. So I'll put a picture up now of me wearing the Bloomsbury blouse so you can see what it looks like on. Um, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm happy with the fit. I think the ruffle is such a pretty feature and I think it would look really nice this one paired with a pair of jeans for quite a casual look. But I think it would also look really lovely dressed up with maybe like a black pair of trousers for an evening out too. So yeah, it was an enjoyable sew. It was quite a fiddly sew, particularly with the delicate viscose crepe fabric, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I'm glad I spent time on the finishes to make sure it'll hopefully last well. Oh, and I thought I'd mention, I've written a blog post um, kind of reviewing this pattern and talking about the adjustments I made. And I'll link that blog post down below in case you fancy checking that out too. But yeah, it was a really nice make and I'm really glad um, that I gave it a go. And um, yeah, I love this fabric. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that one. So my next make for March is a t-shirt and it's one that's a really summery one. So I feel like we need a bit of sunshine here for me to wear this one out because the print is so summery. And I made this t-shirt using a remnant fabric I had left over from another make. It'd been sitting in my stash, this remnant, for a couple of years now. I'd originally used it to make a Kyello wrap dress by Named Clothing. And it's a really lovely summery print. I'll show you here. Um, it's this really lovely ice cream print with this white base and all these really pretty ice creams and sort of pastel -y shades. And this is an art gallery cotton jersey. And I always find art gallery cotton jerseys are lovely and soft. They're the softest jerseys. Really nice quality. But yeah, I originally made the Kyla wrap dress in this. So it's quite a fun dress. I'll put a picture up of that one. But when I was having a look through my Fabric Remnant stash, you'll know if you've watched some of my recent vlogs this year, I've been trying to go through my Fabric Remnants and figure out ways I can actually use them and wear them rather than having sitting in a suitcase, which is what they have been doing. Um, and I found that I had quite a decent sized remnant of this and I thought I'd have just enough to squeeze a t-shirt out and I thought it would make a nice t-shirt for summer. So I originally had planned to make the Astaire t-shirt by French Navy, which is a new to me pattern this year. And I made a wearable twirl version of it earlier this year and I liked it. I'll put up a picture of the pattern so you can see what it looks like. It's got kind of like a dropped um, shoulder and a boxy fit. And that's what I was planning for this fabric. But when I had a look at the pattern piece and the fabric remnant I had, I found that the fabric remnant I had wasn't very wide. And because the French Navy Astaire has these sort of, um, the kind of grown on sleeves, the pattern piece for the front and back bodies is quite wide because it goes out um, by the amount you need for the sleeves. So I found it didn't quite fit, so, but I still really wanted to make a t-shirt out of this fabric, so I had a look 
through my patterns to find a pattern that would be suitable. And I came across this pattern here, which is one of my favourite t-shirt patterns, actually. And it's the paper cut um, solar tee and sweater. It used to be called the Kyoto sweater and tee, which is the pattern I've got, but it's been upgraded since. And it's a really nice and um, boxy style um, tee and sweater pattern. You can add a little ruffle on the sleeves as well, which is what caught my eye on this pattern when I originally bought it. And I have made a few versions of the ruffle sleeve. It's got a slight dropped shoulder, yeah, quite a boxy fit. It comes together really nicely. And I had a look at the pattern pieces for this pattern. I got them out and put them on my fabric and found that because um, it's got a slight dropped shoulder, but not a full grown on sleeve, the pattern piece of the body is slightly narrower than for their stair tee. So I could just squeeze out the two pattern pieces for the front and back for the solar tee. And then I had um, enough fabric, so smaller, narrow pieces that I could use for the sleeve pieces, which I added on extra. So it was sort of meant to be that I use this pattern instead of the Astaire tea pattern. And I'm really glad I did actually, because I really like how the t-shirt has turned out and I know I find this pattern really wearable. So here is my solar tea in my ice cream jersey. As you can see, it's quite a boxy, relaxed t-shirt. I decided against the ruffles on the sleeves because I thought this print is already quite busy. I thought the ruffles might be a bit too much. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see how it's turned out. It's just a really nice shape to it. I love the dropped shoulder. In terms of sizing, um, I have the old style pattern and paper cut have since updated their size range. So their new sizes now go from UK 6 to UK 20 and the largest size is for a bust of 46 and a half inches. And I made the smallest size on my pattern, which I think now there's a one size smaller available, but the smallest size on my pattern is for bust 32, waist 24 and a half and hips 34 and a half. So my bust size and slightly smaller on the waist and hips because it's such a boxy shape. I think the most important um, size on it is the bust. And anyway, even then there's quite a lot of room. So I think I could, if I had the newer size, I could probably quite size down quite happily on this one too, because it is quite a roomy t-shirt. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out and it's a lovely summery print and I think it'll go really well with a pair of shorts in summer or a pair of jeans on a maybe a slightly cooler day. So I'm glad I've kind of used that fabric up. It's such pretty fabric and I had enough to make a piece that I'd actually be able to wear. Um, if it had a, sli had a slightly smaller piece, I might have turned it into pants or knickers, but um, it seems a shame not to be able to show the print off because it's such a nice one. So I'm glad I did that. It's nice to have that ready when the sunshine does arrive. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. My final sewing make for March that I've got to share with you is a sweatshirt and it's the third sweatshirt I've made using a pattern which I think might be my new favourite sweatshirt pattern and it's this pattern here which is the Mile End sweatshirt pattern by Closet Core and you'll have seen I've been really enjoying this pattern if you've watched um, some of my previous videos this is my third version like I mentioned I think it might be my favourite one I've made to date actually and I think I'm going to stop for now <laughs> hopefully the weather will warm up so I won't need too many more sweatshirts for summer it's a really nice pattern with some really nice details. Closet Core released it late last year, I think, as part of a loungewear collection, which also included a joggers pattern called the Plateau Joggers. But I really like this sweatshirt for its interesting details. I'll show you the line drawings. So it's quite a boxy, relaxed fit sweatshirt. You can either make it with this crew neckline or this hooded version with a crossover front and a kangaroo pocket. And then all the versions have sort of dropped shoulders, a back yoke detail, and then these really cool um, sort of style lines, these sort of seams at the side that kind of wrap around the front. And it's also got this interesting um, darts on the sleeves too, which is a nice feature too. And I always find closet core patterns sew up pretty nicely. Their instructions are really good. So it's really enjoyable to sew this one I've found. And it's got a good size range too. Um, I've got the size zero to 20 version in the paper pattern. But there's also a PDF version you can download in a size 14 to 32. It's a really nice one to sew and I've made three versions all using View A, which is kind of the classic sweatshirt version. And the first two versions I made, I lengthened slightly because it does look like it's going to come up quite cropped. But my third version, I went for the cropped version. And the reason why I went for the cropped version is because I made this version using up remnants I had left over from my first two versions. So I originally made one, my first version in this really pretty lilac fleece back sweatshirt fabric. You can see how snugly and fleecy it is. It's the Mind the Maker organic cotton fleece back sweatshirting fabric, which I got from Minerva. And I really like it because it's really snugly and thick and also because you can get matching ribbing in exactly the same colour. So you can see here, there is the um, ribbing in the lilac. And then I made my second version of the Mylan sweatshirt in their sage green colourway of their fleece back sweatshirting. Again, really pretty. And again, I got the matching ribbing too. 
but I had just enough left over to squeeze out a colour block version. I think this Mylan sweatshirt pattern lends itself really well to colour blocking because it's got the back yoke detail and these interesting um, side seams that come around the front so you can have a play with colours there. So I thought a colour block version would be really fun and I'm really pleased how it turned out and it ended up cropped because I had a little bit less fabric to play with but also I thought it might be quite nice to have a slightly different crop version. I do like a cropped sweatshirt. So here is how my colour block version turned out. Apologies, it's a little bit crinkled um, but I'm really pleased with it. Um, I basically started off by um, looking at well, what fabric I had and how I could use it before I decided on the colour placement and I found I didn't have enough of the lilac ribbing left over for the cuffs so I went with green cuffs. I started from there, went with um, purple sleeves and then a green front and a green yoke and a purple back so you can see it's a real mix and, mix and match of the colours and I had a bit of fun. Um, on the green I added a sort of um, the purple top stitching and then on the purple it's quite subtle but you can see I added the green top stitching just to have a bit of fun with the thread too and yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out and I actually really like it cropped um I might definitely consider making another cropped version at some point although I don't probably need any more right now um in terms of sizing I made the size zero which is actually for a bust 31 inches waist 24 inches hips 33 so quite a lot smaller than me particularly on the waist and hips but it is quite an oversized pattern and the finished garment measurements did look like it would come up quite large and I didn't want it too oversized so I've been quite happy sizing down like that. And previously, like I mentioned, for my first two versions, I'd lengthen the body. But for this version, I just lengthened the sleeve by one inch, which I'd done in my other versions, just to make sure it was nice and long and cosy on the arm for me. So I'll put up a picture of me wearing this sweatshirt so you can see how it looks on and how long the kind of more cropped style or sort of per the pattern comes out. I've really enjoyed wearing this sweatshirt, actually. I've had a couple of compliments when I've been wearing this one out, which is always nice. And it's just really comfy and, um, yeah, a bit of fun, I think, with the colour blocking. I think the lilac and the sage green go really nicely together so I'm really happy I had enough scraps of that to be able to turn into another cozy sweatshirt but like I say I've really enjoyed the mile end sweatshirt pattern but I'll probably now put it away for a while maybe I'll bring it out next winter maybe even try version C because that's quite a different look I think and I think that'll be quite a fun one to try soon too but we shall see but yeah that's my third sewing make so as well as those three sewing makes I also finished a couple of knitting projects this month I've got to share with you and they're a really fun knitting projects. Actually, I think they turned out quite nicely. They're quite cute. So I'll share those with you now. And the first one I made is a set of fairy lights that I knitted for my daughter's room. And I did, knitted them using a pattern from this magazine here. And this is a um, knitting magazine by King Cole for lots of Christmas knitting projects. It's a really lovely little magazine, actually. I'll link it down below. There are lots of fun projects in here. The main big project in this magazine is a knitted nativity, this one here. And I knitted that a couple of years ago and I really enjoyed knitting it and we get that out of Christmas. There's also some other really cute projects in here. Um, I knitted this Christmas some of these little sweater decorations to put on the tree. I made some for our tree and then for my mum and sister too. And they're a fun little project. And it's nice actually because all these projects are quite small and they're knitted in double knit. So it's a perfect to way to use up little scraps of double knit you might have kicking around. But the pattern I use for the fairy lights is this one here. Um, here it is. It's a really sweet little fairy lights um, garland. Here it is strung on someone's fireplace. And I originally made a Christmassy version to hang up above our fireplace. I made it in sort of sparkly yarn I had left over from the Nativity project actually. And it's all sort of Christmassy colours. And I really enjoyed having it up. So when we took it down, I then made a more neutral set, which we've now got hanging up that's up for the rest of the year in sort of like a cream and a sort of taupe colour. And then um, I decided to make a set for my daughter's room. I think someone on YouTube actually had mentioned that would be really nice. And I thought that was a really lovely idea. Um, so yeah, I made this set for my daughter's room. And here they are um, in pink, which is her room's all um, pink. She's got pink walls and some pink bedding. So this, these go quite nicely. And if you look closely, you'll see the pink walls slightly sparkly, um, which is quite fun. And then I just used some leftover white double knit wool I had to make the actual fairy like bulb bits. And then they're stuffed with toy stuffing. So... It's quite a simple little project. It's quite um, an easy one because once you get into the swing of it, you're kind of knitting the same thing over and over again. They come together quite quickly. And then you knit the little cord using an eye cord. And I always think that's quite fun how it comes together. So yeah, I'm really happy with how they turn out. And I'll put a picture up so you can see how they look in her room. Um, yeah, I think they're quite pretty and um, I'm glad that she seems to like them too. So yeah, it was a fun little project, quite an easy one to knit away in front of the TV and it was nice to be able to use up some wool that I'd had sitting in my stash because I'm trying to reduce my yarn stash down a little bit. 
My second knitting project I finished in March also actually used the same yarn. I'd used the Knitted Fairy Lights, the pink sparkly yarn, and I bought that yarn specifically for the fairy lights because I didn't have anything in my stash that I thought would be quite right and that would go in her room. But when I finished the fairy lights, I had quite a lot of it left. I just bought one ball, but the fairy lights don't really take much wool at all. And I was quite keen to use the rest of the ball up because I am trying to reduce my stash down rather than add to it. So I was having a think about what I could do with that leftover yarn. And my husband suggested I make a little blanket for my daughter to use when she's playing with her toys, like her dolls and teddies, because she often likes getting them all out and kind of covering them up if they're ill or if they're going to bed or sort of taking them around the push chair with a little blanket on. So that would be nice, a really nice idea actually of my husband's to have an extra blanket and it would look really cute in the sparkly yarn. So I had a look on lovecrafts.com. I find they have a really nice selection of knitting patterns on there. So I often browse and you can kind of filter by say blanket. And I had a look through and found a really cute pattern, which was um, a lace hearts blanket. And I'll put a picture of it up it so you can see what it looked like. I thought my daughter would really, really like that pattern. And I thought for me, it'd be quite an interesting one to knit with a bit of interest with a lacy stitch. The pattern is by um, Knit Sew Make, and I'll link it down below. And the instructions are really good. I find it really easy to follow. And it was a lot of fun to knit, actually. It's had enough to make me think a little bit with the lacy stitches, but it was quite repetitive. So you do get into the sort of into kind of a flow of kind of knitting it and it came together really nicely. So the pattern, I wanted a fairly a, a pattern for a fairly small blanket and that one had a width of 60 centimetres, which I thought wouldn't be too big. I also thought because they're sort of hearts knitted individual little sort of sections, you could quite easily reduce it a bit by just taking out one or two hearts out. And when I had a look at the pattern, it was designed to be knitted using Aran yarn, using 4.5 millimetre wide needles, but the wool I had was double knit. So I decided instead to size down to four millimetre needles, which I think works well for double knit. And then I thought naturally the blanket will come up a bit smaller anyway. So I didn't end up taking any hearts out. I went with just per the pattern, but just with slightly narrower needles and slightly finer yarn. And it came together really nicely actually. It was a really fun little knit. So here is the blanket, oh, upside down. Here is the blanket and how it turned out. Yeah, I really enjoyed knitting this one actually. And I think it's really cute with the little hearts on it and the little sparkly sort of threads. Um, I basically knitted until I ran out of yarn pretty much and I made sure I had enough just to finish it and add a little garter stitch edging to finish it off. But I think it's quite a decent size. Um, it's definitely, my daughter's been playing with it, definitely is quite a nice size for wrapping up a teddy or a doll. So I'm really happy with how it came together and I really enjoyed the lacy stitch actually. I haven't done a huge amount of sort of lace knitting but it was really fun. I found it quite satisfying and something a bit different so, so I'm glad I gave it a go and I'm glad that I had enough to make a little blanket and something useful that hopefully get a lot of um, play out of my daughter will. So that is my final knitting project for March. So those were my March makes. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did make three other outfits in March for the So Frugal Challenge using free patterns. I made two for me and one for my daughter and I'll include a link to that video down below in case you fancy checking out those garments I also made in March. But I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about what I was up to sewing and knitting wise in March. I always enjoy sharing what I've been up to with you. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you would um, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then thanks so much for having a watch. Um, if you enjoyed hearing me talking about my handmade wardrobe, I would like to hear more. I would love it if you would click the subscribe button and then also the bell icon, because that means you'll be notified when I bring future videos out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you again for another video soon. Bye.